Megan thinks that I tend to go for the joke rather than the truth when I'm in a conversation, and that's because I'm afraid of her. Not true. My name is Craig Ferguson. I am a stand-up comedian, an actor, a writer, and a talk show host. Darling. I'm also the husband of a very beautiful and clever woman called Megan Ferguson. Max? She is my best friend and the love of my life. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we agree on everything. I sometimes wonder if we agree on anything. It's not like you say, oh, that well, guy's a psychopathy. psychopathy. You can't say, oh, well, he's, you, you, it's well, you don't say he's a psychopath. 13 years ago, we started a conversation, and it has never stopped. Still going. Yeah, I just think you're, I think you're wrong. No. Yes. Sometimes it stops for a bit, you know, for sleeping. <laughs> In this program, we try really hard to get new perspectives on our discussions. Food is the new internet. You, you'll make it plenty of money. The universe is alive within us. Whoa, this is magical. We reach our conclusions by getting the facts straight from the horse's mouth. And by horse's mouth, I mean experts, uh, not an actual horse. Oh, hi. Obviously. Always talk to Cold to you? Honestly. Honestly? No, maybe not. Well, do you think you look old? Yeah, I think I look old. I'm starting to get a bit wrinkly. I'm starting to look like my grandpa. Um, no, I think you're all right. It's not that I mind getting old. I just mind getting judged for getting old. And also, I mind getting old. Everybody in the house is younger than me. Megan is younger than me. The kids are younger than me, the dogs are younger than me, the cat is younger than me, most of the furniture is younger than me. The only thing older than me is the house. Well, that's why I married you. So I won't get old, you will. Mm. Craig and I have a 20-year age difference. And I think sometimes the age difference can come up in when Craig feels he's getting old, when he feels he's looking a little thick around the middle or going gray. I mean, really, he's been going gray since he was 18. But I think that we could research this a little bit. There are actually scientific things that you can do now to engineer not looking like an old handbag. Everything you find, every piece of news that you get is filtered through the internet or a journalist or an interviewer or a rumor or fake news. So what we thought we would do is just go and talk to people, go right to the source. That's all, it's simple. Daisy. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Craig Ferguson, this Daisy. is my, my wife, hi. Megan. Hi. We have a question for you. Very important question. Okay. Can we stop aging? Uh, yeah, I, I think that we can. This is Daisy Robinson. She's a scientist exploring bioengineering and its potential to end aging. She has posed a very interesting question. What if we view aging as a disease? Can we stop it or even reverse it? Well, that's something I would really want to know about. How old can we get? Could we live forever? And maybe, even more importantly, would we want to live forever? Hmm. Hmm. Living forever. Would you like to live forever, Would Megan? you like to live forever, Craig? I don't, if you were around, I would. Yes, if you were around, I'd live forever. And the kids. Deep. Thanks. <laughs> Daisy, you're a young, healthy woman. I mean that in a totally non-creepy way. Why are you drawn to this particular area of your field, the anti-aging? Anti -aging. One of the reasons that I got into scientific research was because 
I, you know, have sort of family history of different diseases, and I've seen people who are, you know, vibrant, capable people really get reduced to something that, you know, seems like a shell of themselves. And so I feel very committed to helping build kind of physical resilience by understanding what leads to disease. But, but is age, aging itself isn't a disease, right? I think that we are, we are able to do some things that prevent aging in the way that we currently understand it. You know, it's, it's a thing that we're at the sort of cusp of having a better understanding of and, and treating. One would have... I think aging is fascinating for everyone. We're all doing it. It's kind of a universal concern, isn't it? I mean, there's no one of us gets out of this alive. No one. Do you have a, a, a lab, like, where we can yeah, see yeah, test tubes and stuff? Yeah, we can check it out. Do you want to see it? Yes. Can, yes, we yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Very much. Very much. Let's go. OK, Fantastic. I'll get your water. Oh, no littering. Yeah. yeah, hello. So, in the lab, will there be uh, microscopes, yeah. equipment, cool science? Yeah. Do you have any tinfoil? I want to make a hat. I love what you've done with the place. It looks beautiful, really. Sciency. It's sciencey. After you? Oh, cool, thank you. Yeah. Will there be drugs? Um, yeah. I like it. So, what then genetically is aging? Right, so aging, uh, it, it extends beyond genetics. Aging is really a process that occurs as a result of living. <laughs> okay. Right. I, think, I knew that, knew yeah. that. Yeah. I, I want to be a scientist too. So a cell is the basic fundamental unit of life. Right. And we think about it, if you think back, you know, to science classes when you're a kid, you know, we always draw sort of this cartoon of a circle. And they all sort of sit next to one another and do whatever they're doing, depending on the organ that they're in. But in aging, they just get less efficient at carrying out function and carrying out metabolism. So you get this sort of buildup of old, damaged stuff that's, you know, not useful. Yep, that feels like aging, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think you nailed like aging. Nature, what yeah. what so, is it that you uh, personally have discovered here? Right. The work that I do is is oriented around stem cells, and, and of course, we all have stem cells in our body. Right. Um, you can really so study stem cells them. means like cells at the very beginning, then how they were at the beginning of your existence. So, what makes a stem cell a stem cell? The definition of that is is two things. Uh, the first is a, something called self renewal. So basically, you have one stem cell that will divide into two, and each of those um, is a stem cell. Which means is it half the size of the one it divided in, or is it? <laughs> it's a good question. Well, yeah, but think, right? It's, it's a, a thing question. that turns into two things. Yeah. It... So as it's dividing, uh, you're sort of creating more material to. So it grows as it, as it right. divides. Yeah. So right. it grows, and then you know both of those cells are able to be stem cells. And the other important property is they have this feature called pluripotent. Um, now, if you break that word down, potent means power, pluri means many, so this pluripotency that stem cells have is their power and ability to turn into uh, many different cell types. Can you recreate that in the right environment? Right, so that's what really we're trying to do. And one way that we could get stem cells sort of from us um, is you actually take some of your skin cells and you can put them into a dish and you apply these different chemicals or, or proteins that can essentially recreate an environment that allowed those cells to reprogram back into stem cells. Okay. And, and we can learn how to harness that pluripotent power in stem cells to basically deliver a cellular therapy that helps us regenerate our tissues in a way um, to sort of replace things that are broken or damaged. This is magical. So this is, a, this is a thing that can turn into two things the same size as the original thing, and it has many powers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's crazy. It is magic. Yeah. Science is like magic, but real. <laughs> really fascinating to learn what actually happens between stem cells and the physical change. What makes me more susceptible to aging in a certain way than, than somebody else? What is it in me that falls apart first? And is there anything we can do to stop that? I found a test on the internet. That means it'll be excellent and it will work. It tells how old you are, even though you may be Let's skip that for now. But we can see mm -hmm. how old your body actually is. 
Well, this is all just me, isn't it? That doesn't make well, any no, sense. Well, no, no, no. Like, you can be 70, but if you eat well, exercise, do you think your body may be, like, 50? We'll find out where you actually lie. No, I'll I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. This is stupid. Some things I'm not prepared to, you no, know. No, but, I mean, I think there is... I know that Craig tends to worry about these things, and certainly if you put in the idea of taking a test, he'll really worry about it, because who wants to have to receive some awful result? So we're going to take this test, and it will be fine. Quick questions. How active are you? Pretty active, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I'd say. I make you do things. Right, yes, you do. You brush your teeth really well. Is brushing your teeth an exercise? Well, it's not exactly an exercise, but it's all linked. My toothbrush is still here. Yeah, well, keep going. Clean gums, clean heart, nice liver. Clean poops. Beautiful poops. Megan and I have a deal that we live a healthy lifestyle. We eat the right things, we get plenty of exercise. Lie down on your back. And you lie down on your back right now. Do it. And you lift one leg as high as you can without bending it. Right. Whatever the angle of your leg, as high as you, is that as high as you can go? Yeah. Stretch your knee. Really? I feel like you're judging me. No, I'm not judging. This no, you is said, not is that high as you can go? I make... Well, it doesn't, I mean. Okay, all right, well, we'll try a different one. We'll try oh, a different one. No, 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 one. tell no, me no, what's no, wrong, no, no, am I dying? I don't really have the answer to this. So, I'm no, okay. you're not, you're not dying. It's, let's say it's inconclusive. Okay, okay, now, what's your waist size? Because don't they say that like, your waist should be smaller than your hips? Or I think that that's girl? if you're a lady. Yeah, if my waist was smaller than my hips, I'd look fabulous. So, like, if I was to imagine that, like, in the future, well, say you had to remove a piece of someone's liver or something mm -hmm. like that, could you grow another piece of liver that was genetically right. was a match and replace it? So that's definitely something that is in the realm of possibility and I think will sort of come to pass in the not too distant future. We have the ability to understand, you know, how to essentially grow different types of cells that are important for liver function or hearts and rebuild an organ, you know, kind of from scratch almost. So the only thing is this. Think of this though. If you, like, you know if you get an airplane and then you replace the undercarriage, you put another undercarriage on, and then mm -hmm. you, you take a bit of the wing, you put, and over a period of time, all the parts of the airplane have been replaced. Is it still the same airplane? Does it still fly? Does it matter? I don't know. How do you get from this point to where you want to end up with your research. Right, so um, to start answering your question, we'll just actually take a look at some stem yes, cells because I thought please. that would be fun. So let me tell you what, what we're looking at here. These are mouse embryonic stem cells. Okay. So they're mouse, not human cells. Yeah, I could tell. Uh, they yes, look different. They look yeah. yes, yes, a human. slightly smaller. So yeah. essentially, you know, what we do is we, we grow them in, in the lab like this, and it gives us this great power to study biology that relates to humans. So. For example, in, in ending aging, we've extended the lifespan of worms and, and mice and, and other creatures um, by a significant amount of time. I don't like the idea of mice not ever aging. If a mouse lives to a thousand years, do you know that could get terrifying. They could drive and you know perform small Broadway routines. Hey, how you doing? Who will buy my sausages? I don't know, man. I don't know if you want that. There's been a couple different aspects of, of what's been done. Some of it has been with different chemicals that helps them sort of extend their life. Some of it's caloric restriction, which, mm -hmm. you know, is sort of out there in, in the popular a press already. A little mousy diet. Yeah, a little mousy diet. Wait, calorie restriction, so eat less, live longer, absolute scientific fact? Well, mm -hmm. it works in some animals that we have tested that premise in. Would it work mm. in a large animal from Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think we live a very healthy lifestyle. Oh, yes. <laughs> I cook absolutely everything that goes into his tummy. And, and I poop it all out of my bottle. We keep everything under control and routine. If someone had eaten something they maybe sh shouldn't have eaten recently, 
you couldn't, like, find that in a test unless you were looking for it. Craig sticks to the diet beautifully. He is a very dedicated person. He says it's very easy. I'll be honest with you. I like to eat healthy food. I do. But every now and again, it's healthy to unbuckle your belt a little bit. You need to eat something unhealthy to remember what you shouldn't be eating. Enjoy something fried. Put a heft in your stomach. Otherwise, stress. And stress is the most unhealthy thing of all. Hey. What are you doing? Nothing. I got, um, I was, uh, I, I'm, uh, I have a little gas. You know. All right, well, okay, so I'm very into this whole aging thing that we're going to find out some stuff. So what I need is your blood, like actual blood from your body. It's just a little tiny prick from a needle on the finger, and I need it today. All right? Yep. Thank you. All right. I don't mind taking blood tests. The thing is, if you give someone your blood, they can tell anything about you. Doctors can tell what you've been eating, when you had it, what drugs you took, when you took them, what kind of TV you've watched. For, I wouldn't be surprised if from a blood test they could say, oh, on a porn website, were you? Do you feel that you can essentially, using this, stop aging? You know, I think that we are already in the process of reversing several of the things that contribute to aging. And there are already, you know, clinical trials underway where we're learning how to sort of, you know, clear some of that damage and, and make our bodies more efficient. And really, if we're able to hack our biology and, and change sort of the way that we currently engage in our lives, um, you know, I think it's possible that we can extend our lifespan significantly. What does significantly look like? There is a theory that the first person who will live to be 200 is already alive today. You know, with this new technology, with our new information, we're learning ways that we can actually accelerate the repair. So instead of just preventing... Interesting. We're, we're allowing our body to repair damage that's accumulating because of aging. I think one of the more fascinating parts of what Daisy was talking about was this ability to slow down or essentially stop aging and then maybe start to reverse it a little bit. Like how amazing would that be to you get to a certain age and then you kind of regress back? Does it happen mentally? Is it just physically? Really interesting. So one thing that's cool, you know, bringing up mice um, that you can actually do with stem cells, mm -hmm. when you're trying to manipulate the genes and do gene editing, sometimes you want to create an animal that has a different gene so that you can study. And so you could do that. You can make the DNA change in these stem cells. So you sort of add these tools that can change the DNA. And then what you can do, you can find the ones where it successfully changed the DNA, and you can inject them into a fertilized egg and create an animal that contains the gene edit that you want. Ultimately, I mean, you can, you can change your DNA. I think the most interesting thing Daisy said was about the idea of altering DNA. I can't help but feel there's a bad science fiction film coming out of that premise. Or maybe a really good science fiction film. Or maybe real life, bad or good. It does seem like a dangerous amount of knowledge. As our technology progresses, as we get better at um, you know, understanding how manipulating our genome works, there, there will certainly be a day when we can ask the question and maybe, you know, do something about, I want to engineer a greater athletic ability. 
a stronger right. intellectual sort of predisposition. Ooh, that's wow. getting into a yeah. dodgy it area a little bit. Into like a moral gray <laughs> yeah. area. You know, it's, it's true. You bring up an interesting point. There are people all over the world with all sorts of different opinions, um, of course, and many different opinions about this type of technology and this type of knowledge, um, even just studying stem cells. A lot of people don't agree with that. It's a weird thing, because if you think of it in scientific terms, like is it, is it moral or should you or shouldn't you, like, you could say, like, when people learn to boil water, well, if you boil water, then where does it all end? Yeah. And, like, I'm an alcoholic, right? You bypass the alcoholism, my story in life changes. Mm -hmm. Everything in my life changes. I meet different people, I marry someone else, our children are different structures. The, mm -hmm. the, the entire course of, you know, a butterfly flaps its wings, the, you know, the, the whole idea of, you know, uh, Hitler is not born but somebody worse is born. Mm -hmm. you know, what I don't understand like... about it is that if you removed the alcoholism from me, I'm a different person. You know, I've been that my whole life. I don't think of it as a pathology. I think of it as just a description of myself. It's kind of what I'm like. So that seems odd to me. If we continue to do this, then we become a different species? Is that, well, is that the end I, of the road for I think the thing this? is, you know, that because of the nature of the diversity of who we are as a human species, um, there are gonna be people who are naturally inclined to self-engineering or genome engineering or engineering their children or what have you. Um, and there are gonna be plenty of people who also don't. And I think that as we move forward in time, there's going to be a significant divergence. It's sort of separation between the two groups. And I think that if we're talking about genome editing, you know, that's a really powerful technology. And if there's one population that's really engaged in that, and there's one population that is not, you not start sort of drifting, you know, that, that changes how you evolve. 500 years from now or something, we, we have these this sort of divergence in Homo sapiens and... They have you, original Homo sapiens Yeah, versus... and then you have the sort of next iteration yeah. as you have these huge... It's interesting if you think about the ethics of something like reversing aging or gene editing. If you took out something that was unfavorable, is it a house of cards? If you take out down here, does it then fall down completely? How does it affect the entire picture? And is that worth it? Or wow. Eloy and the Morlocks. You ever read that H.G. Yes. Wells story? Yes, I the, have. In the time machine, the Eloy are, uh, they live above ground and they're all beautiful and blonde, I think, mm -hmm. actually. And then the people like me, the grubby ones, live underground. And we come up and we eat some of you guys and then we go back underground again. It's just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Scotland. I guess this all comes down to if you could live forever, would you? You know, I think forever's a long time, but if I could double my lifespan, I would. You know, we're already moving some of these technologies into people and, and seeing gene editing in humans and seeing some cellular replacement therapy. And I think 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I think we're gonna see this huge increase in therapies that are addressing things that, you know, lead to aging and start this fight against aging in our bodies. It raises a whole bunch of philosophical and ethical problems, doesn't it? I mean, if you can take personality traits, what, what's a personality trait and what is a disease? What, what's a pathology and what is a human being's way of thinking? With any huge leap forward in technology, I think we have to ask ourselves more questions about ourselves. So in a way, I suppose that the evolution has to be societal and philosophical as well as scientific. I think with any new technology, there are ethical questions. And I think with gene technology, they are immense. If you are breaking down the very structure of life to the chemical information or the mathematical information of what makes us exist. What we do with that information is uh, very tricky because knowledge is power, but who gets the power? Well, and I think that these types of conversations are incredibly important because ultimately, you know, we as the human population currently on Earth, 
we need to have conversations that help us decide how we move forward and how we push this technology forward and how we address this concept of curing aging or extending life. And I think that especially scientists, you know, we're a global community and we think it's important to have these conversations and put in place regulations. But it's not just scientists. I don't think it's even the right thing for the scientists to be the deciders, you know, they're just no, they're just yeah, one part of the whole process. Yeah. And it's our, I think, our responsibility as scientists to turn around to the world and say, hey, like this is what I've discovered. This is what it can do. How should we move forward? And really talk about that together, you know, with with the community, with politicians, with doctors, with children. So I guess you go even to a further discussion of what are humans inherently like? Yes, we all age, yes, we all die. We're genetically predisposed to having different diseases, but are we genetically predisposed to being good or bad, to using this to something that is positive or something that can create some sort of dystopian society using anti-aging technology? Perhaps the right to get sick and die is a, it, perhaps it is that, perhaps it's a right. Although I say that right now because I feel okay. I felt if I was feeling sick and, and dying and you came along and said I can fix that for you, I'm absolutely sure I would change my mind. Well, yes. No. On a personal level, this really strikes a chord with me because my father passed of pancreatic cancer. And if he had had the options of what Daisy is talking about, he'd be playing with his grandchildren. time for us right. physically mentally to be together and kind of stop there what would what what would you pick what? i wouldn't actually i wouldn't pick because if we're on a journey together mm -hmm. you and i my dear mm -hmm. then if you stop the journey stops doesn't it i don't think i don't think stopping time is such a great idea no, it's I just mean, a, it's, a it's just a photograph isn't it it's a fair point but if you could kind of reinforce your body's 